Okay, we are recording. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Value Working Group meeting on November 19th. I am your host, Elizabeth Barron, even though my thing says chaos community. I represent the whole community. Mm, yeah, as so one. the artist formerly known as chaos community. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm taking over for Matt B, Matt Broberg, who is not here today. So um, we'll just zoom right through these agenda items. It not KubeCon this, KubeCon this week? It is. Like, yeah. So I think that's, yep. that's taken a lot of <laughs> bandwidth from people. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so I had started this agenda um, just very bare bones. So, um, and I was not at the last meeting. So um, we'll just go through them. We'll bring up the action items from before. Whatever mm -hmm. we want to talk about is good for me. Uh, so the cool. first one was um, from last meeting, we were talking about the change request naming consistency, and that was an action item for Matt G. I think just I'm look done. At the value. Okay. I honestly think I'm done. I mean, it's possible that a few things may have slipped through and we can catch them next time, but I honestly think I've been through every working group updating change requests to whatever they're called now or whatever they were reviews to change requests. So anybody have questions about that for Matt? Nah. No, that was uh, pretty straightforward. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll zoom ahead then. Um, see 11 is, or it's 11 for me. Come on, That's Elizabeth, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> we can get through this pretty quick um social listening metric system updates and it looked like there was a pretty big discussion about this last time mm -hmm. and sadly i did mm -hmm. not have a chance to listen to the the recording last time so um uh do we want to just look at kind of what was talked about it looks like georg was going to do the change of the name and he it looks like he did that is that yeah is kevin is that through the name change? Uh, I'm not sure. <coughs> Actually, there there is a there is the question of how we're going to handle this in the in the next release, uh, because SCMS is currently listed as a metric. Yeah. Uh, and going forward, it's going to be a uh, uh, what's the what's the word we use? Uh, initiative? initiative, but it may not even be that, to be honest with you. OK. Uh, so do we in the in the upcoming release is it going to stay a metric or do we do we remove yes. that no i think the I, my proposal and other people can chime in is that scms for this release just gets renamed to social listening okay um and then over the course of the the period to the next release like two releases away this is when we can start to develop those metrics that are down at the top of, do you see those at the top of page two? Yeah, the five or six mm -hmm. key metrics that uh, yep. can inform exactly. the, uh, the, that initiative, right? Yep, exactly. And so then for the next, next release, we would actually remove SCMS or social listening as a metric, essentially replacing it with these five, and then okay. probably do something like write a blog post that says you can bring these five together <laughs> in a way that's meaningful. Okay, that would so be that my is happening, just not uh, just not in this next release. Okay. Uh, this is yeah. trust, merit, consistency, utility, and transparency. Asks the new guy. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So the deal here, Stephen, was that um, a lot of our metrics are pretty atomic. They're pretty low level things. So mm -hmm. like, you know, age of an issue, right? Right. Um, and the the metric that we're talking about here was really a, a com giant composite metric or very big composite metric. So it kind of was, you know, one of these things that's not like the others. Yeah. If you remember the song. I do. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so the proposal was to um, break it, break that metric down into its component parts or its atomic parts and have those atomic parts be the metrics. And then we could write a blog post as to how those atomic metrics are brought together into this larger, this larger thing. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. Looks like we've got the the elevator pitch down. 
on this one finally. <laughs> so, so no changes have been made to the uh, the website. So for the uh, for the continuous release. So I'm assuming if the name change has happened, it's only happened in the value metrics repo. Could we? Could you take a second? Maybe just an issue of PR to change the name in the on the website. Mm -hmm. So that that would actually so that would be part of the uh, metrics release. Uh, the metrics release. So mm -hmm. to to move that one forward, uh, yeah, we we can initiate the process to move that forward. But it's it's a little more than a than a than a pull request. So can we can we initiate that now? I'd love to get some traction on that. Yes. Yeah. Like, and if we could just do it in today's meeting, that would be awesome. Oh, so there, yeah, there's a pull request to change it. Okay. From Georg. On the website? Yes. Okay. okay let, me, let me drop the link in. Let's okay. Check. Or not on the website, on the, on the value repo. Okay. Gotcha. I'll take care of this PR. And then if you could initiate one to get that changed on the. Okay. Okay. Release notes. Okay. Okay, so he, yeah, he just propagated that throughout the metric. Okay. I will merge that. All right, that should be taken care of. Do we, uh, the... should we create a new uh, release issue for this metric or shall we use issue 75 that is already uh, that is kind of an ongoing uh, oh we can probably I would say start a new issue okay. for this and you could reference 75 oh, yeah. 75 is a pretty long conversation at this point that's yeah. where Sean had done all his work yeah I think Matt Roberg and I have the ambition of like trying to break some of those down into discrete metrics, and I'm, I we're doing I, that. Yeah, no, we're doing we're doing right. that. Perfect. Yep, that's the mm -hmm. those are those metrics yeah. at the top of page two. Yep. Okay. Oh, hi, Venya. Maybe you don't hear us. Hello. Sorry, Emily. Oh, um, that's okay. I had to take Celine to a doctor's appointment, uh, and we might have a diagnosis on her legs soon. So, yay. <laughs> I, we're counting it a win. Any win is a good win. All right. So, Kevin, do you kind of have that role in then? Yeah, I'm just... I'm just kind of doing that in the background. So uh, okay. continue on. Continue on. All right. Continue on, we shall, Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> um, I see under the last meeting, right where we were talking about the big five, it says, talk to Elizabeth, assuming that's me, about chaos specific definitions. Um, wha what, what do we want to talk about with that? <laughs> are we going to use our, the ones that we uh, talked about with using for chaos or? Yeah. Um, it's been a while since I was able to catch up with you. Um, so first, sorry about that. Um, no worries. No, okay. no, it's crazy. Um, as long as we're continuing to operate the social currency metric system, um, as we start to build that data, we should start to see those definitions build and change and become larger scale over time. And I think that that would be an incredibly useful um, source of information that we can use in order to define the metrics and then figure out what we might be missing, what we might be overthinking um, as we move forward. 
So since you already have a live um, implementation of the metric system, um, I feel like we can use those definitions as they grow over time in order to maintain and manage the metrics. Because the big issue that I see, and we talked about this a little bit in the last meeting, um, is like it's incredibly difficult for a large mass of people to really agree on what trust means, which is why the SCMS largely integrates with power players um, in the community. Uh, but with that in mind, if we're really going to define each individual metric the way that we are, uh, more information will always be better. Um, so that's kind of my thinking in uh, understanding the definitions as you use them actively in the implementation. So that definition would then just be added to the metric as just kind of like an extra, extra context. Yeah. So we okay. would have like a general definition implementation and then we would have a history of the definitions that you had used and that history would inform um, how we view and develop the metric. Okay, fair enough. And because the development of the actual metrics aren't happening for a while, right? A few months after. So we're, this, we're least, okay. Yeah, we're working on them, but it, it's going to take a bit. Like defining trust for the entire chaos community and then providing that metric to other people before that definition really hits ground, we're going to need a lot of data to determine what that really means to people. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and to, as a as a confession, um, I have not really been looking at this for a few weeks. Um, I think I got stuck where there's, I don't know how to get new data in because I don't know that that process was ever documented. So like there isn't any new doc, any new data being brought in because that piece is missing of what, how do I get that in there? Okay, then I think we should follow up with Rhea. Um, to okay. get it out. Because if I remember correctly, that was the main part of the user experience issues um, that occurred as a result. So um, we definitely need to get um, information automation going through. The way that we typically do it in um, the Data Studio implementation is by using a, a Zap and a um, Excel data sheet importer. Um, so it's more or less automatic but you have to still click the button and you For can sure. schedule okay. it to say, click this button every Friday, but it's yeah. not like a hey, do this every day kind of thing. So, okay. so I um, will email Rhea and um, she and I can sort out getting that process going. Does that make sense? Is that cool? Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, and if you okay. want to see either Dylan or I, we'd be happy to get involved in that as well. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Add me as an action item here on this. And I think it was also decided um, like fairly recently, in fact, that like uh, we'd be performing the actual definitions for the metrics asynchronously, right, Matt? Yeah, eight o'clock is like midnight to me, <laughs> to be real honest with you, so. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Okay, cool. All right, so I think we can move on then. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. So the next item on the agenda, if everybody's cool to move forward, if not, now's your chance because we're moving on. All right, uh, so new metrics up for discussion. Popularity was being talked about, uh, continue, continue discussion about pop project popularity. Um, wh what do we wanna do with this right now? I think there are action items on that one. I, if I remember correctly, popularity was going to be kind of split into two different metrics. And I, I believe Matt was taking a, a closer look at that. Matt, some other, other, some other, other Matt, other Broberg, Matt, sorry. Probably the Broberg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that was, that was a Broberg. <laughs> okay. Because there's kind of a lot of, you guys <clears throat> call them meta, meta notes. So, um, yeah, it looks like there was a lot of discussion there. So, um, should we table this until Matt B is able to attend? Yeah, or... I'm okay, okay with that. 
unless Kevin, unless you remember kind of what the tenor of the conversation was. Uh, I think the the metric as it was was it was trying to uh, it was trying to do too much. So it was talking about the popularity of users and the popularity of the project. Uh, so it was kind of all over the place, which was I think that's one of the reasons that uh, uh, we're kind of looking at it and kind of separating some stuff out, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, okay. But there was a there was a big conversation on that. So uh, I think getting back into that metric is probably it's probably going to be an editing process. Right? So when we okay. pull that metric back up and, and look at it. Uh, because that was we we were working on that metric in the meeting. I see. I mean, I see the link that I gave is called like metric number two popularity. Um, do you see that? And so, is there a metric one somewhere? <laughs> Oh, it's below. I see. It's on. Well, yeah, it's all it's... in the same document. Yep. I uh, know it's a different document. So the thought last time was to put those into split documents. I uh, see. But when when we were working on it, we were working on it. we were splitting it out from the one document, right? Here, I'm going to put. This is popularity number one. So the first, the one I first had on that list was number two. <laughs> being less popular than number one. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> so one is, it looks like kind of aiming at how, uh, how widely is the open source project used, identify project contributors, popularity. Okay. So the first one looks like just trying to determine how how much a project is used, just period. Yeah, like, I, I think there were three issues. It was, it was usage, uh, project popularity, and then contributor popularity. And those three things were all kind of jammed into one metric. Right, and then number two looks like, I think it's a lot of what Sean talks about, which is more about like an individual's popularity and the impact that that has on a project. Is that right, Sean? Or kind right. of honing, honing in on the person, yes. less about the project itself. Correct. Um, okay. I mean, I, to me, these make sense. I'm, I'm happy to take a little bit of time today. Maybe we should... Uh... Change the heading a little bit so that we don't have a confusion rather than a, like more clarity. Okay, this popularity focus on this thing rather than having both the same tag project popularity. Mm -hmm. I think in the in the previous discussion we we talked about how we have to we have to define both of those things, project and contributor popularity, so that we can discuss the relationship between the two. Is that correct? Mm, yes. So maybe, so we have two people on the call who could probably speak to both of these. So I think Sean can certainly speak to contributor popularity. Yep. And I'm actually looking at Steven only because <coughs> of the work you're doing at RIT with the OSPO. Just, yeah, I, sure. I would imagine, imagine that some of this lines up with maybe what you would be looking at. Yeah, uh, a lot, um, but let's... Let's let Sean go first because okay. he's real and I'm hypothetical. <laughs> what part of me is real? Just so I know. The the contributor popularity part of you is real because okay. you've worked in this space. Yeah. And so so um, essentially there's a way I'd put it is in the past I've done a paper and some additional work looking at how do developers move from one project to another? And what is the impact of a developer's number of stars and number of followers on whether or not people follow them from one project to another? And so there's pretty 
which we showed pretty conclusively that there's a significant impact that very highly followed developers if they move from project a to project b will take a number of people with them not by like natural personal relationships necessarily but just by the reputation that's reflected in the stars and followers data that they have and so from a developer perspective that means that it's probably smart as an open source project to pay attention to who your most followed folks are um, and what their contributions to your project are you know if you have somebody that's contributing a lot then um, and they're highly followed then if a new thing comes along and they go to it you might lose more developer bandwidth than you thought <coughs> or than you might otherwise so, expect i mean that's so, the risk view of it so is the metric about identifying a single person who is popular within your project or is it about identifying a collection of people within your project who are popular is i think from a, if i'm looking at the metric i think it's a question of how you how we want to filter it i think you could filter it either way but i i think of um development and usage as am i looking at development and usage metric one no metric two okay yeah all right i felt like i was on the wrong metric like this isn't you are on the metric right? yeah metric. so this is this is basically um contributor yeah so yeah i'm talking about the contributor the individual contributors popularity and so um some of these implementations are actually probably not like we're looking, we should be looking at contributor followers and contributor uh, stars on their repos, probably. But we also care about issues they open. So it is more, it should be more contributor centric than it presently is. And then you're down, in, you're down in the implementation section. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, help us through that a little bit. What's the specificity? that needs to be there um since it's broken out into two metrics that's the you know the question is so stars and forks are indicators of a of a repository's popularity and so if this is contributor reputation which is what you know is here then what really needs to it needs to be the stars on repos that a person is a significant contributor to and forks of repos that a person is a significant contributor to. And those are probably, they're at least less significant or less central to the work I've done before than, um, yeah, all these number, all these implementation specifics right now are very, very focused on repositories, not on contributors. So I might say like, uh, oops, hang on. What is this? I, uh, I just started editing. Like, I think that list is basically the wrong list. If I'm to. <laughs> okay. Um, that's like, it's carried, like we haven't oh, gone any farther than that. Wrong thing on my clipboard and I didn't realize that copied through. That's my. Oh. <laughs> like, what is that? <laughs> I was actually trying to make it work, but <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> No, you're good. That's my fault. I I, I attempted to copy um, a URL, and it looks like it didn't take. So it just gave you the I, I, I know what that is. <laughs> so Sean, I have a question. If, if, if this is the case, then are we analyzing like individuals uh, GitHub account to see his popularity? Like, yes, how yeah. many folks, how many followers, how many <laughs> stars that individual has yeah okay so this is like if you're looking at the individual and that's the what the title of this is right now then these are more individual popularity metrics so um if you go into github it's the the followers that you have as a developer and the repositories that you own and the stars on them and the forks of repositories uh that you own um, or and and you could get into projects you're a significant contributor to. So, yeah. but that get that gets a little bit more deep into to how you count things. I think we how, how you deep, assign yeah. significance. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's a pretty deep, like almost a spiral. I wouldn't maybe do uh, that. I think these these awareness metrics they're platform specific, right? Like the star count. Like this is specific to the Git platform. 
don't know. I don't think so. Uh, uh, GitLab has some kind of equivalent. Okay. If you're right, stars might be, but um, let me just check over here. Are they called forks in GitLab? Yes, they are. Well, yes, they can, are. Can I say if a contributor I type yeah, name? Yeah, stars. Or... Repositories are stars. So stars is universal so far. Um, I was saying if I type a contributor's name in a Google search and if that comes on the top, is that a popular contributor? SEO notoriety might be a really, really good engagement metric. Um, how well Depends if you're looking for like SEO stuff gets really kind of dicey because there, there are people who write a lot and don't develop a lot. And so the question is, what kind of influence are you trying to gauge? Are you trying to gauge the influence of a, of a developer with a good reputation? Or are you trying to gauge influence garnered through media and press? Those are not always the same thing. I feel like there are two different ways to answer the same question, though, because if you if you consider I'm a non coding member, right? Mm -hmm. But if my profile SEOs well, if my rank in a um, search within the site uh, is rather high, I've gained a certain level of notoriety and trust factor even if I have not committed code. So we should have an awareness metric that determines the code factor. And then I we guess, should have another one on the dashboard that determines the notoriety factor. One could speculate about that. Um, I, did, I haven't proven that. Yeah. So I, I do know that the number of followers a contributor has uh, affects people that go with them when they leave the project or when they move on to another project or start devoting more energy to another project. So. Mm -hmm. Whether or not their, their media notoriety has influence on what developers do, I don't think that we know. I don't think yeah. anyone's done that study. It reminds and, me of, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the YouTube creator, but uh, there's a YouTube creator who was actually interviewed because he had grown his channel enough to get a play button without a single video on his channel. And the reason is because he had just developed this habit of, every time he watched a YouTube video, he would genuinely comment and he would end up being the top comment on things. So people would subscribe to him and without a single video, he got a YouTube play button. Wow. I have to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Though they're probably trying to fix it. <laughs> so I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of. I think um, there's, there's two kinds of, oh, go ahead, Matt. I think there's two sorry. kinds of content. Oh, sorry. There's two types of content. There's code and there's content and an open source. And I think reputation as a developer, I I don't know, I don't know where that comes from. You know, I know how it's reflected in the open source platforms for the developer. Um, how they garner those followers is um, I don't know. So my my recommendation is to to put something like that in here. I would say that every metric that we have, all whatever fifty five, not everything is empirically validated via, no. uh, via yeah uh, an academic study. No, but I don't um, want to. I guess here I don't want to mix influence in social media and an influence in writing with influence as a developer because I. There are a lot of people who write prolifically and, you know, talk a lot about technology, but don't do a lot of technology. And those, I don't know that those are the people that get followed. And so if we want to have a metric like that, I think that's a different metric. That's almost like um, media influence, developer media influence or something like that. But it's not, your, your, your content reputation is not the same thing as your developer reputation. And that's what's reflected by platform followers. So are you suggesting to rename this as contributor development popularity? And then uh, propose I another? Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I mean, this says developer or non-developer, like I wouldn't say that, like that's not, that's not the intent of where this metric begins for sure. Um, this is about developer. I mean, it's really about contributor influence. You know, I mean, a contributor 
it's really about contributor influence in a sense. It's not even popularity, it's about contributor influence. And then Venya would contributor influence or something along those lines possibly be worth the development of a separate metric that does take a look at the relationship between social media influence or something that that it may be worth recognizing wow um i think it's i think so yeah. but i get but i think it's a different thing and i think it's really important to keep it a different thing and not munge it into here yeah or at least from the intention that is it kind of reminds me of a network cloud um so if you were to take a social capital cloud, um, really long but thin connections between uh, people contributing um, on scientific papers. Like you publish a paper and it has like seven or eight different people included. You're now a integral part of that conversation, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's really, really strong. But the more trust that paper provides, the thicker it gets and in that kind of model, there are two really, really important values in that there are people who have very long, tenuous connections, very thin, and then people who have very short, but very deep connections showing as a very, very thick connection. Both of, their, both of them carry tremendous value, but when I, as a marketer, go in to look at, okay, who are the power players and who are the people who will help me meet other people, I look at those both with different levels of value. So I say in this network diagram, um, my goal is this, I'm going to champion this factor over this factor, even though they both show in the same diagram. Does that make sense? So it's not necessarily yeah. worse or one is better, but that they're both useful for different things. Yeah. They play well together and are answered in the same fashion. And I feel like, we're kind of just building that. So I think work and talk are two different things. And what's reflected in GitHub is work. And what's reflected on, and what's reflected, I guess, in an issue tracker could be characterized as talk. But the, the act of contributing is different than the act of um, a media presence. and. But, I mean, those are just really two different things. So, so Sean, I've, I've heard you mostly talk about contributing as code. Mm -hmm. um, and, and where does this fall in on, like, if if you're the docs writer, you're a contributor, right? Absolutely, yeah. If you're a program manager, you're a contributor, right? So so how are we, and it's, it's, it's kind of common across the board that, you know, Right, and that's why followers well, the concept of contributor meets coder when when we have a broader range of coders and, and if I'm the if I'm the contributor who's doing the 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 social media or the 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 docs or the comms or whatever for the project, right? Mm -hmm. Then am I still a contributor? Right? Yeah, I mean, in, in the way that we measure it in chaos, you are, and and I oversimplified when I said code is contribution. It, it's a common yeah. thing, but since I'm new, I got to make sure I understand yeah. what we're saying, right? I, I think the main distinction I'm trying to make is between media influence and the influence that developers have on each other yeah. on the platforms where they're performing the work, either by contributing code or, or approving or gatekeeping the contributions that others make. The, the work that happens in the in around the product, the project is different than the work that happens in the promotion of the product or the person and how those two different things influence the effects that one person leaving your project might have, I think are different as well. I mean, so just, I don't want to conflate two different, I, I don't, yeah, I guess to me, I think that I don't want to conflate two different things. Oh, I think that's um, fine. So on um, listening to your talk, I had kind of changed and the title contributor development influence. Mm -hmm. 
because I, I still think I think we need to create that separation because yeah, there could more, be that's, yeah influence is a very general term development influences okay and then down below I added a few things still listening to you talk to as much as I'd like to believe that who you work for doesn't make a difference yeah oh it does right yeah I'm sure so, so I'm just I was trying to think out loud maybe in this list of other things that might be worth tracking. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you talk about followers um, and stars and forks, those are good. But then also, you know, folks coming from very high profile tech companies. Yeah. May yeah. have a lot of influence. Yeah. Yeah. I have a quick um, question. Mm -hmm. um, Sean, or I'm not sure who this is for, but um, so if I'm a, a high profile user of the the software, even though I didn't contribute back to it, but I'm a high profile user of it and I'm a, like a an evangelist for it unofficially, you know, and I'm a, a champion for it, but then I find something better and I switch over. I've never actually contributed back to the project, but I've been a very vocal user. Like, where does that fit in? I think, it, I think it's the second metric. It's another kind of influence. Okay. All right, I got you. Um, and you would measure it in more traditional media influence kinds of ways. Like stuck like over Yeah, you know, like I think your Twitter or... followers, your YouTube okay. followers, um, Instagram, uh, you know, hits on your blog post, blog subscribers. Um, cool. um, can I show you two screens from a platform that I use that might be helpful? Sure. Yeah, Elizabeth, that's you. You have to make Venya co-host. Uh oh, okay, hold on. Click on participants. Participants, there we go. Make co-host, all right. So weird. Boom. So sharing my screen, this is a platform that we use to pull leads for um, scientific organizers for Keystone Symposia. And you'll see that we have this individual who's made a few public, like 44 publications, um, but only provided one poster at like a conference or anything like that. So this person seems to represent essentially like the primary scientific version of being really, really heavy in workshop. Should, but really low should we stop the recording for this? This is being recorded. Uh, this is all publicly available information. Just making sure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Um, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what we have here is we basically have like, here's the things they've done, the things they've contributed, and then here's the networking diagram. So this diagram is very different. Uh, like you see all these long tenuous connections. Um, so I would want to talk to this person when it comes to knowing people or this person when it comes to knowing people, but I'd want to talk to this person when it comes to the strength of their contributions. So we could just separate it as like, we have two separate metric sets that work in tandem with one another to determine overall notoriety. So we would have influence, which is basically how far reaching are they in a community? And then we would have like a contribution factor or a trust factor for how strong those connections are. So we're, I hear what you're saying. Where I would caution this group is that We've in the past in the value working group expanded the scope of a metric so far that it became undigestible by the community. And I think keeping the metrics more at the discrete level that the metrics are in our other communities will make them more consumable. And I think by bringing together these two different kinds of influence into a single metric, you make it harder for a person that's consuming chaos metrics to do so. And I'm just, I would just caution that's a that's a challenge this group has created for itself in the past. I like, yeah, I mean, I, I have no problem keeping them as two separate metrics. I don't, I don't see any real issue. Venya, were you, are you trying to bring them together? Is there a, a goal in doing that or? Uh, I think they should be developed independently, but with stout knowledge of each other. That's fair. I mean, we have a number of, so they could, we have a number of metrics across the different working groups. They're clearly part and parcel to each other, right? I mean, yeah. they are. 
Um, but we've disentangled them at least from an atomic kind of metric perspective. Um, but yeah, so that, that's fair. I hope it was helpful anyway, but yeah, yeah it was, yeah. it was, that's a very cool, uh, and I, I, I mean, I definitely, I definitely know what you're talking about. I've done analysis of different kinds of interaction before with networks. And so I, I definitely understand the strength of weak ties and, and how that can lead to influence and, and navigation of a graph. But I think in this case, I like I, my, I, the visualization you have, that is possibly a very good application, but I would like to get to that application. And I think we can get there quicker if we have discrete metrics. Um, so is there another metric that's being proposed? And if so, should we add yes. it to the uh, spreadsheet? I'm already doing it. Okay. So in Venya, the, what you're talking about is Kind of like what Sean is talking about. It's about a, a person's presence, right? Not a project's presence. Correct. Okay. I think I think that's what you're saying. I think so too. Just wanted to make sure before I like jotted some things down. Yeah. What I'm what I'm trying to say is that a person's uh, contribution is far more transient over time than the projects that they tend to collect around. And if they're involved in two or three major products, uh, there's a specific timeshare that is determined there. And where their attention seems to meander, as I understand it, that's what we're trying to um, track because that person's attention span, if they are a particularly strong influencer, um, is also going to impact uh, where other people go. And as a result, it will ultimately impact the projects, but the projects are staying still. Um, it's that transience factor that we're trying to track. It's that behavior um, from my understanding. I, I like this discussion because I think what has come out of it is that we have a, a metric that's trying to take a look at, not what you two were talking about, but a metric that's taking a look at project popularity, trying to understand the popularity of a project um, but then we have two metrics that are trying to take, trying to get a better understanding of the people, the the influence of the people from a couple different perspectives, one from say a development perspective and one from like just the things that are evident in GitHub and um, the other more of a, a social perspective as to how they're having an impact and individuals having an impact in the world. So I like that. Okay, we only have two minutes left. Um, do we want to keep continuing with this or do we want to move on? We had a couple other things on the agenda. Well, two minutes. It's two like minutes. Asking, uh, now asking it's 90 a seconds. Asking a class, do you want me to let you go now or do you want <laughs> oh, to keep yeah, talking? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so to, to <coughs> add something very quickly and then maybe we pick a time to talk about it later. Um, Georg and Matt invited me here because I've got this open programs office at RIT now called Open at RIT. And I dumped the web page for that and the charter for that into the, uh, the chat. And one of the things that I'm supposed to start exploring is, is how do we start applying metrics in, in open work writ large to perhaps influence the, um, the not, not probably not, to replace journal articles anytime soon, but to bolster the, uh, to, to fill the gaps between journal article and the work that's really used. There's been this discussion back and forth, I, I'm just learning um, in academic spaces about alt metrics, which is what I've dropped in here. Oh yeah. Which, which is, yes, I know, which is several platforms, but they're, they're those alt metrics are trying to talk about the kinds of things <laughs> you've just been talking about in terms of, you know, the, the Twitter stuff and how many people are reading my blog posts about my journal mm -hmm. and all that other stuff. 
Yeah. Where I'm trying to get to is in between those things where, you know, the alt metrics seem to have been, they seem to be really exciting to people briefly and then seem to have fallen off um, primarily because they're not conceptually tied to the work as much at least that's my current understanding yeah i'm trying to find a way to place the the data and the metrics that we get out of open work communities how many people are using my data my open data sets that i published how many people are forking my project those kinds of things is is ways to give people more weight to their annual evaluations tenure and promotion yeah and, have you looked and, at stas and milosevic's work have I looked at who? Staza Milosevic. Nope, but I would love to get that in the chat. Because she's, like the yeah, person. she's at the University of Indiana. She's pioneered a lot of the work around alt metrics. Um, and is she using actual actually, open work data in it, or is she on the, the Facebook blog post Twitter side? I don't know what she's doing now. It's probably been five, six years since I actually worked directly in that space myself. But when I was in an information school, I, I worked a lot with uh, alt metrics people because I was a source of data for them. All right. So yeah, anyway, that's kind of why Georg and Mac asked me to hop in here that if, if yeah. there's a spectrum between published journal article and alt metrics, where's all the stuff that chaos tracks Right mm -hmm. in open source and the equivalence of those things in open data and you know the Center for Open Sciences platform and all those things because yeah. they're more tied to the work and can we get more weight from those in academic careers than we can from all metrics? So clearly, yeah, it's for another time. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, th I think for especially in in some disciplines, these kinds. I mean, Chaos is providing another set of metrics probably less focused on academics than on technology professionals. And mm -hmm. so academics kind of fit in that broader circle. And who's influencing industry is a different question than who's influencing a project. Yep. Um, and and, and um, industry takes influence from all kinds of places, right? Um, academics are only one of them. Yep. Uh, all right, so this is very good. It's great. Um, I wish we'd have discussed this earlier. This is of interest to me. Would it be possible to continue this next time? I will be here in two I weeks. I will be here. And I will come back in two weeks. Right on. One, one, one week. This is weekly or every two weeks? Okay. Every, two, every weeks. two weeks. Next week is Thanksgiving, so I'm eating a big turkey. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> watching football, gaining weight. Okay, cool. We'll just uh, continue this. Um, I'll, I'll make sure to put that on the agenda for next time. First. Right on on the agenda yep. so and all so right everyone time, uh, thanks next time is directly after thanksgiving or two weeks after thanks no the week after so it's two weeks from today got it all right thanks you bet bye, bye. 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 bye.